Hey guys, Vanessa here from the Life of Apex and Indy. Say hi, Indy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about shadows. Can you say shadows? Uh -huh. Shadows. Good job. <laughs> Bye, Indy. Bye. All right, so let's jump into the edit now. All right, guys, so this is the image that we're going to be working on today. I'm going to show you how I created the shadows for this chair here. And before we jump into that, I'm just going to give you a quick little lesson on how lighting works. So whenever you're creating a composition, always make sure that you know where your direct source of light is coming from. So for instance, in this image here, I have my light coming in from this window, which means that the light is coming in from the right and it's getting a little bit um, darker on the left side of the photo. So what that tells me is that all the shadows should be on the left side and all the highlights should be on the right side. And you can really see it on Adeline here. You can see it on myself. You can see it on the chair, the gramophone, and pretty much everything that's in the image, even the walls. Um, overall, it'll just help you create a more realistic composition. All right, so let's go ahead and turn these things off so we could just focus on the chair here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off. Um, whenever I'm creating shadows, I usually work in three um, steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and create three layers. I'm gonna go ahead and move them down below the chair layer and I'm going to name the first one light shadow I'm going to name the second one mid shadow and the third dark shadow all right and some notes before I begin actually shading I always work on the blending mode multiply when creating shadows and so the reason for that is because if you don't use the blending mode and let's just say you use the normal layer and let's just say I go ahead and I color in with brown. I'm going to go ahead and um, at 100 opacity. <clears throat> and let's just say I go ahead and color in with brown. So as you can see, this color brown is completely different than this brown here. So you could go ahead and see it looks nothing like that. And so what's going on here is that you're just coloring over the pixels, meaning you're losing detail. So you can't see the floor coming through. Even if I lower the opacity of this, it's still not going to give you um, that, that dark, deep um, look that you're looking for when you're creating shadows. However, if I go ahead and turn this to the multiply, layer now I have that color that I was going for so as you can see this is a lot closer it's still a little too dark but it's a lot closer to this color here and another thing is that you begin to um, get some of those pixels from the floorboards um, back because all you're doing with the multiply blending mode is you're darkening the pixels versus just coloring over them so that's just why, uh, you know, quick little tip on why I always use the blending mode multiply when creating shadows. And let me go ahead and, okay, cool. All right. Another quick note is shadows are never black. So I think that's like another mistake I see a lot is where um, people might think that the shadows, just because something's a shadow, it's automatically black and it's not a shadow will always be just a really really dark version of whatever color you're um, creating a shadow for so um, the way I usually do it to get the right kind of color is I will go to let's so I'm gonna show you on I'm gonna start with the light shadow so I'll just show you with this one I um, all right <clears throat> I click on this square here and what I do is I sample with the eyedrop tool here that pops up, I sample the darkest part of the image that I'm gonna be creating a shadow for. So in this instance, I'm using um, the leg here. And as you can see, it's not pure black. See, pure black would be all the way down here in the corner. And as you can see right here, these two are very different. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. 
and it's just a really dark deep brown so i'm gonna click ok all right and now let's go to brush when creating shadows another tip is i always use with soft round brush and i always work with very very low opacities so for the light shadow i'm gonna work at a two percent opacity and i'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here I'm going to have a pretty wide brush for this one, something like around there. So all I'm going to do for this is just create some strokes starting from this center um, leg here. And I'm going to move towards my left in the direction that the shadows would be going from. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a few strokes. I wouldn't um, do like this click thing, like where you're just like going ham clicking. Um, the reason for that is because you will create um, splotches, especially if you're working with darker or I'm sorry, higher opacities. So always kind of go for like a more painted um, stroke here. So definitely just glide your brush or your you know pen, whatever it is that you're using and just give it a few strokes. And I'm going to do the same thing for over here. And really don't be shy to bring it all the way out here it's always better to go out too far than to not go far enough and then have to continue it and then now you have a big splotch in the middle so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and that's already starting to look pretty good don't worry about perfecting it just yet we're gonna go ahead and mask that later but for now, we just want to get the basic shading going on. And I'm going to go ahead and toggle that so you could see that I'm not crazy and just <laughs> brushing with a 2% brush. Um, so it does make a difference. All right. Um, another quick tip is I usually try to use the rulers here just to make sure that I'm keeping like a straight um line when it comes to shadows just unless you're trying to do like a diagonal um look like if your shadows are on like the like if the window is maybe back here then okay it would be a different story but in this instance um you have the light coming in from this side and so all the shadows need to be going directly across the the canvas here so just measuring these to make sure that they are straight and they are so let's go ahead and move on to the mid shadow. I'm going to make sure it's on my multiply layer and I'm going to go back to the brush tool, zoom in and I'm going to go in with a smaller brush. So probably half the size of the other one. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in with the 2% opacity and I'm just going to go ahead and stroke same direction again just gliding and um yeah the reason why because i know you're probably thinking like why is she working with a two percent opacity like that takes forever um yeah you could go with like a higher opacity like maybe like a 10 or whatever floats your boat but in my opinion i like to have more control when creating shadows just because i feel like i can actually see the shadow building up and I can minimize um, having to go back and uh, redo it or maybe like I went too dark too fast and um, you know it just I, I feel like it's more destructive when you go uh, with a higher opacity versus just gradually building up your shadow so that's the reason why and there we go that's the mid shadow and then finally I'm gonna go ahead and place that above actually the light shadow and then I'm gonna grab this dark shadow layer, bring it above the mid shadow so it's in going from dark to lightest. And I'm gonna repeat this, but I'm gonna go in with a very small brush. I'm actually gonna zoom in um, a little bit more. So I'm gonna get a brush that's about the same size as this leg here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm probably gonna crank it up to maybe a 0.4 opacity just so we could go quicker here. And um, same thing, just start from the leg here and really bring it out as far as you can. And just do that a few times. All 
All right, so there are um, my two shadows there. Um, when you're creating this, um, the, the dark shadow, try to um, really like play with the size of the brush too. So you could even get like really small and just really bring in this dark kind of where these two connect because that's what it would really look like in real life. Um, you would have like this really dark connection right here between the actual object and the shadows. So there you go. All right, so now um, we're gonna go ahead and toggle that so you could see the difference there. I'll do it again. All right, so now the final step for um, this method here is masking everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna start with the light shadow. I'm gonna turn on the mask there. Make sure you're on the blackest black and the whitest white. And if you're not familiar with that, black is to pretty much like erase or mask and um, white is to bring back. So if you erased too much, you can always bring it back with the white. So that's how masking works. If you don't know that, I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up to a 10% opacity. And I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much just clean up shop here. Um, all I'm gonna do is try to eliminate all the shading that I have on this right side. And the reason for that is because remember the light is coming in from the right side of the canvas and so it'd be hitting these um these legs right here and if anything this would have highlights not shading so you don't want to have any shading on this side it should all be on the left side so that's what i'm doing here i'm just going to use a soft brush and just create like this almost triangular shape around the leg here with um, the mask. All right, and then I'm also going to go in with a really wide brush here and just really blend these into the floorboards just because I don't want really um, hard lines with the shadows unless it's this really, the really dark shadow. But for these lighter and medium, shadows I really wanted them blended in so I'm going to go ahead and toggle this mask so you could see how I clean that up and I'm going to repeat that with the mid shadow so I'm just going to go in there and kind of just do the same thing all right and that's that cleanup right there and then the last one is the dark one. And for this one, actually I'm gonna go in with a really wide brush here and I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start from the left side on this one. Cause what I don't wanna do is touch the center right here where um, the leg and the shadow begin. So what I'm gonna do instead of coming and brushing from my right to my left, I'm gonna actually do the opposite for this one. I'm gonna start from my left and brush inward, but not all the way. So that's what you're gonna see me do here. I'm just gonna do it real quick. All right, so that's that one. Let me go ahead and toggle that for you. So pretty big difference there. I feel like the medium one needs a little bit more. Oh, actually, it's this one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it to this one a little bit more. Just really fade it in there. All right, then what I'm gonna do is get my dark shadow real quick, and I'm just gonna bring it in slightly underneath right there. All right, so that pretty much is how I do the legs there. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle these one by one for you. So here is my light shadow, and here is my mid shadow, and then here is my dark shadow. Um, for this chair here, it is missing this um, wide shadow over here. I'm gonna show you another quick technique on how to do this. This is more of like the destructive way of doing it, um, just because I'm doing the same exact thing, but I'm doing it all in one layer. But the problem with that is that if you go too hard or too light on one of your 
areas where you're going either too dark um, or if you're doing like your light shadow or your dark shadow and you go too hard or too light or you mess up in some way you would have to pretty much start over or you would have to um pretty much mask out everything versus just targeting um certain areas um so like maybe you just you went too dark with your dark um, shadow and well now you have to erase your light and your mid shadow maybe even though you liked the way it came out so i don't know if that makes sense but it's definitely more destructive but if you feel confident um or it's something very basic like this could be a quicker way of doing it but if you're looking for something more non-destructive then this is the method that i um usually go with so i'm gonna go ahead and name this one a chair shadow and same kind of thing i'm gonna go ahead and just use a 0.2 opacity again let me make sure i am on this brown yes we are okay and I'm going to go with a really wide brush. And all I'm doing is the same concept, but I'm just going to be gradually. Um, oh, forgot to go on multiply. Oops. OK, so all I'm doing is the same thing, but I'm just going to be making my brush smaller. So all I did here is essentially the light shadow. And now I'm just going to size down the brush and do a few more strokes here. And what I'm doing now is what would be equivalent to the mid shadow. So there's that. And then I wouldn't go too hard with the small brush just because this is such a wide um, area right here versus these more narrow um, shadows that are being created here. This is a lot wider. As you can see, kind of follow the same steps, but just all on one layer. And now all I'm going to do is move it to where I want it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and toggle it on for you guys one more time. Here's my light, my mid, dark, and then here's the same kind of thing, but with this bottom shadow here. And I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, that is pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, please um, comment below and I will get back to you guys and answer whatever I can help you with. And I really hope you enjoyed this and thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time. Bye.